Hello children, welcome to the social science class 10 history unit 3, the impact of the British rule in India. My dear students, in this lesson you will learn the following points. My dear students, India was scattered into number of provincial states and the Indian native rulers were not having coordination among themselves. They were competing each other and this situation was exploited by the British government. With that, the British thought of exploiting the situation to further for their political consolidation in India. The British were also implemented the divide and rule policy among the Indian rulers. With that, slowly dominated all the rulers and subjugated them, took the Indian native kingdoms under their control. My dear students, in order to achieve complete domination in India, the British employed war and negotiation methods cleverly. What is war and negotiation method here? There were some kingdoms who opposed the British government. The British East India Company by declaring war against those kingdoms, they were able to capture the small provinces into the British Empire. And also by making some treaties, by making some agreements with some of they captured the provinces into the British Empire. They used these methods very cleverly to expand the British Empire in India. With all this, the British thought of strengthening their hold over India permanently. By then, India was devoid of one nation concept. It means India was lacked of one nation concept and was scattered into various kingdoms and the British decided to bring India under one political stream, one administration system and one economic structure of the country. The British integrated the whole of India under one administrative and political structure. My dear students, here we go with the concept administrative and judicial system of the British government. What were the changes made in the field of the administration and the judicial system of the British India? Various changes were brought by the British government in India. In that, First, we learn civil services. The Governor General Lord Cornwallis introduced the administration of civil services for the first time in India. The system of appointing employees for the purpose of trade was done by the East India Company from the beginning. Dear students, Lord Cornwallis, eminent Governor General of the British East India Company, he was appointed in the year 1786 as the Governor General of India came to India, made several reforms in the Indian administration system. In that, the first one, civil services. He was called the father of the civil services in India. The company also provided permission for private workers to trade. By using these opportunities, employers made money, became corrupt through illegal means. The reason to introduce the civil services in India, children. By then, the British East India Company, there was lot of corruption in the British East India Company, especially the officers of the British East India Company. They were engaged in corruption activities. To remove that corruption, to bring the efficient administration system to India, Lord Cornwallis decided and brought the new system to India here. Initially, trade was only permitted to the British East India Company. But later on, the permission was given even to the private officials of the British East India Company. With that, they started earning huge amount of the money and became corrupt through illegal means. In order to control all these corruption activities, the Britain government in the year 1773, the government of England implemented the regulating act in India. 
This is the first milestone in the constitutional reforms of the Indian history children. The first act introduced by the British government in India. What was the main reason to introduce this act here? The aim of regulating act was to control the corruption of the of officers of the British East India Company in India. My dear students, with all these developments in the year 1800, Lord Cornwallis opened Fort William College in Calcutta for the benefit of people aspiring to join civil services. The Indians who would like to become the civil servants there, for them there was an opportunity created by Lord Cornwallis. But this initiation did not find support from the, the board of directors of the British East India Company. Initially, they did not support. As a result, all the appointments till the year 1853 were done by the directors in the British East India Company government. But after 1853, the appointments for civil services were done through the competitive examinations. The Indians had to attempt these competitive examinations who were promoted with the good rankings, they would be given the good positions in the British East India Company. So, here is an example IS exam, IFS exam, Indian police service, Indian foreign service, Indian uh, railways services, the various civil service positions created by the British government in those days. Why did the British suspect the efficiency of the Indians? The reason, though the competitive examinations started by the Lord Cornwallis in India, majority of the Indians were not qualified there. They were not able to gain the good rankings. So, therefore, and moreover, small officials as well as Jamindars were corrupt under the British East India Company authority. Therefore, Lord Cornwallis argued all the natives of Hindustan are completely corrupt. As a result, only lower grade jobs were given to the Indians. Followed by the administrative reforms, let us study about the judicial system of the British East India Company. The British government was brought several reforms even in the judiciary system of India. A new judicial system started finding roots when the British rule began taking over from the Mughal rule. That was the time the Mughal empire was declining. As a result, the British started to take a firm control over India. After the battle of Buxar, the Mughal emperor Shah Alam handed over the Diwani rights, the authority to collect land taxes to the British. With this, Dewell administration came into effect in Bengal region. The Dewell government is also called the Dewell governance here. The Dewell government, two governments were there. One government was headed by the Indians. So, the Indians were supposed to look after the civil and judiciary issues here. But whereas the British retained the authority of managing the revenue collected in the provinces. So, that is how the dual governance came into existence in India. My dear students, later on the British thought of bringing more centralized judicial system in India. Step by step, the British started to improve the judicial system in India. With the implementation of this system, the British took over the authority of the Mughal and established their supremacy in India. Followed by that development, in the year 1772, two types of the courts were established by Warren Hastings in each district. One court is called a Diwani Adalat, which is also called a civil court. The another court here, a Fausdari Adalat, as a criminal court. The two types of the courts were introduced in the district level by Warren Hastings. In these civil courts, the Hindus were dispensed with justice as per the Hindu scriptures. For example, Hindu scriptures like Mahabharata, Karma theory, 
Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, according to that, what were the capital punishments were there, were dispensed to the Hindus. But whereas Muslims, the punishments were given as per the Shariat Act, Shariat law of the Islamic. Slowly the British legal procedures were introduced in the criminal courts by the British government. The British started improving the legal procedures, the new legal code of conduct was introduced by the British government. And not only that, the civil courts came under the administration of the European officers. Though the criminal courts were under the control of Qazis, but finally they were also functioning under the supervision of the European officers. With this, the British were able to establish the new judicial system in India. Followed by the judicial system, let us learn about the police system of India. Dear students, the police system in India has the root with the British government. Lord Cornwallis implemented the efficient police system in India for the first time. So, therefore, Lord Cornwallis is also called the pioneer of the Indian police system. According to the Indian police system, he created the new post of superintendent of police, the head of the police service in a district. He divided a district into many stations in 1793 and put every station under a kwatwal. A kwatwal is none other than a cheap police officer in a district followed by the Kotwal. Similarly, he put every village under the care of Chaukidar. Chaukidar meaning of the word watchman, Hindi word. Chaukidar and Kotwal both were responsible here. Kotwal was made accountable for thefts, crimes and other law violations at village level. My dear students, with all these developments, the system of appointing British magistrates started in 1781. To control the police in India, there was no very good efficient system, but by this time 1781, the system of appointing British magistrates started. With this, the police officers were under the power of the magistrates. In 1861, the Indian Police Act was implemented by the British government and that act provided the base of good law and order in administration. In 1902, the police commission allowed the appointment of suitable qualified for the post of the police officers. The British started to recruit the Indians into the police system, followed by the police system let us study the military system of the British India. What were the impacts, what were the changes in the field of the military brought by the British East India Company Authority? The British appointed the Indians for the military and took the entire India under their control with the help of the military. Initially, the Indians were not given importance in the military, but later on, they appointed the maximum Indians in the military. With that, the British were able to control the entire India. The officers were again the British here. In the military system, the high positions in the military system were all to the Europeans. The officers were again the British. The Indians could reach the rank of Subedar the highest post available to the Indians, it was only Subedar. More than that, though there were number of the highest positions, but the Indians were only confined to the Subedar position. The most of the Indians who were worked in the military, they were called the coolie soldiers. They had to work for the British officers. They, they were served for various other purposes of the British officers. Therefore, they were also called the coolie soldiers. However, the British government accepted the recommendations of Peel Commission in 1857. After the first war of Indian independence, 
there were number of changes brought in the Indian military system, the British military system of India. Peel commission recommended some changes according to that, based on that the military system was redesigned in India. So, that is about the military reforms of the British government in India. Followed by the military reforms, let us study about land tax policies of the British government. Land taxes policies of the British government, among that one of the most important land reform, first one permanent jamindar system or jamindari system, which was introduced by Lord Cornwallis. The first land reforms of the British government. My dear students, among the land reforms made by the British East India Company, the first one permanent jamindar system. Lord Cornwallis implemented a new land tax policy in Bengal during 1793 in order to generate a steady revenue annually. There was a reason behind the collection of the land revenue by the Indian provinces. By then, the British East India Company had established a firm control over the Bengal province and according to that, the British East India Company had to pay 4 lakh pounds rupees to the British government in England per annum every year. With that, the British East India Company in India tried to generate steady revenue annually, permanent jamindari system. What are the important features under the permanent jamindari system here? The land was given under the control of the jamindars and the land tax was fixed by the British East India Company and the jamindars were expected to pay the agreed land taxes to the company on set date every year on the particular date of that particular year. Followed by that, he was free to collect any amount of the land taxes from the farmers and could retain the excess money collected. Jamindars had an opportunity here. The British government never questioned here how much amount had to be collected from the farmers. They could have collected more, but what was the agreed money was there that had to be given to the British East India Company. Rest of the money the jamindars could be utilized, the jamindars could be used such kind of the excess money. With this type of the system, this benefited the jamindar more here. When they were unable to pay the land taxes to the British East India Company, the jamindars according to the law, the ownership of the land was taken away by the company. The company could be confiscated the land of the jamindars. Both the jamindar and the company were benefited by this system, but the farmers were the grave sufferers. The another important feature of the jamindari system here children, the farmers, the farm land laborers suffered due to irregular working opportunities in the farming lands. The working opportunities were not continuously found in the land. They had only seasonal working conditions. As a result, apart from the rainy season, apart from some uh, agricultural activities season, they had to remain jobless. Finally, this system was extended to the states Bihar, Odisha, Andhra, Varanasi, for all these regions the system was extended. According to the administrator Charles Metcalf, he expressed his opinion about the farmers of India. The Indian farmers were born in debt, lived in debt and died in debt due to the land tax policies of the British government. Dear students, followed by the permanent jamindari system, we have one more system here that is one more land reform system that is Mahalwari system. Let us come to know what is Mahalwari system, who implemented the Mahalwari system here and where was this system was implemented? 
let us come to know here dear students mahal mahal means thaluk mahal war system it was implemented by r m bird and james thompson there were differences in the implementation of this system from one region to the another region under mahalwari system the company government entered an agreement at the level of mahals at the taluk level with regard to payment of land tax in the states uttar pradesh in many parts of the madhya pradesh punjab and delhi apart from that big and small zamindars were part of this system since the company officials fixed more land tax than the expected production from the fields many zamindars had to lose their ownership of the lands the marginal farmers and agricultural laborers who were dependent on these zamindars also suffered due to this followed by the mahalwari system let us learn about a raitwari system children the raitwari system was first implemented in baramahal region by alexander reed in 1792 later on in the year 1801 this system was implemented in madras and mysore region by sir thomas munro most of these regions had become part of british empire by that time dear students you can see there the british officer sir thomas row in the image who implemented raitwari system in madras and mysore region what were the important features of the raitwari system dear students here are some features of the raitwari system under this system both the farmer and the company were directly linked here here there were no arbitrators there were no uh, the mediators in this system it was directly linked between the british east india company and the farmers according to the terms and conditions of the raitwari system the tiller of the land was recognized as the owner of the land the third condition of the raitwari system the owner had to pay 50% of the produce land tax to the company remaining 50% can be retained by him the land tax had 30 years tenure this type of the raitwari system land tax they had 30 years of the tenure term was there the students followed by the land policies of the british government let us come to know what was the impact of the british land tax system in india yes of course the british land policies were made certain changes in india according to the impact of the british land tax system a new class of zamindars who exploited the farmers was created here a new section was created zamindars who exploited the farmers the farmers who were subjected to the exploitation of the zamindars became landless slowly some of the land tax policies of the british government gradually made the indian farmers to lose the lands they became the landless land became a commodity here loans could be raised by mortgaging lands with the development of all these land reforms land became a commodity here loans could be raised by mortgaging lands many zamindars also had to mortgage their lands in order to pay the land taxes the agriculture sector became commercialized and had to grow raw materials needed by industries back in england finally the money lenders became strong the students that was with the land reforms and the impact of the land reforms let us study the next concept here the modern education system what was the impact of the british rule in india in that especially the modern education system there were several changes occurred during the british rule in 18th century to the education system of india new schools were started for the children of british as well as europeans living in india 
wherein Hastings facilitated the expansion of the modern education in India. In 1781, he started Calcutta Madrasa for the first time. Later on, Jonathan Duncan, a British citizen, started Sanskrit College in Banaras in the year 1792, the another milestone in the uh, development of the education system. Later, Charles Grant gave importance for the universalization of the British education in India. The expansion of the British education, India received special support after the appointment of Lord William Bentinck in 1828 as the Governor General of India. Dear students, you can see there Sir William Bentinck, he became the Governor General of the British East India Company. Soon after that, he appointed Macaulay as the member of the Governor General's Executive Committee and Macaulay was also appointed as the Chairperson of the Committee on Education. He submitted the report on education in 1835. It became the base for the modern education in India. His policy aimed at the creation of a new class of Indians who are Indian by body, but British in intelligence, opinion and state. That was the, an intention of the, the use of English medium in Indian learning system started after 1830s. Later on, the Governor General Lord Dalhousie he established the universities in Calcutta, Bombay and Madras as per the suggestions of the Charles Woods Commission 1854. With all these children, what was the impact of the British education in India? Here are some important points. The changes in the education system of India. India could develop a modernity, secularism, democratic attitudes and a rationality along with the nationalistic ideals. Impetus was received for the local literature and the languages. This facilitated unity in thinking process among the educated class. The importance was given to the local literature and the languages here after this development. Not only that, periodicals started emerging. These scrutinized the policies and working of the government, criticized the government unjustice policies in the newspaper dailies as well as weeklies. New social and religious reformation movements were also started at the same time here by socio-religious reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Swami Vivekananda, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Jyoti Bapule, Savitri Bhai Pule, Mahatma Gandhi, all these social reformers started a new socio-religious reformation movements as a result of the introduction of the Western education. The thoughts of the thinkers like J. S. Mill, Rousseau, Montesquieu and Old Tyre, Karl Marx brought fresh thinking in the mind of educated youth in India. Not only that, the freedom struggles that were taking place across the globe influenced the Indians also here. Like the French Revolution and all influenced on Indian freedom moment, Indians could understand and appreciate their tradition here. My dear students, in this module, we have studied administrative and judicial system, in that civil services, judicial system, police system and military system. We were also able to understand land tax policies, permanent jamindari system, mahalwari system, raitavari system. We studied modern education. So, in that we studied the report of T. B. Macaulay and Woods Commission. Dear students, with this you will have to refer the textbook exercises, page number 29 textbook, refer the exercise questions here. All these are the important questions of the exercise. I hope you are able to understand, you will be answering all these questions. Thank you children, all the best.